right, and uh, welcome back to TMP MBS, and we're delighted today to have Western Nor with us. Um, uh, previously, we were talking about uh, Western's time in MWAA and MOD within TNP and uh, TGW, and then later TGW and uh, Euro. Um, in this part, um, I would like to have a discussion with Wes regarding the uh, issues and also um, regarding the SC resolutions. Uh, ha hello, Wes. Hi, Simone. Hi. Um, yeah. So, um, tell us about you know how, how does how do the issues work and you know you you've been a fantastic contributor in that in in that arena. So, uh, if you could share your thoughts and your experience with 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 us, that would be great. No, absolutely. I'm so happy to. Um, I think God issues is something that gets overlooked by a lot of the more regular um, population NS because it's one of the least like heavy traffic areas of the site. Um, and I would say that I I wouldn't say absolutely that I had any fantastic contributions, but um, I did write I think four issues. Um, I don't super remember each one of them, but. Uh, I was more involved in giving a lot of critiques to other dra other people's drafts, and honestly, the process is not like too different from what you would otherwise see in the Security Council or the General Assembly. It's really player driven, and um, while issues in particular is a little bit more uh, reclusive or maybe exclusive is the better way to put it than the world assembly just because the process of actually adding issues to the game isn't super public and is uh more staff led um it's still an incredibly fun and collaborative collaborative place and so i got my um i got my start there because um i was really just an issues answering player up to this point and you know i hit 250 million nation or 250 million population and I saw the little button that comes up that says want to write issues for nation states. And I remember thinking, oh my God, like maybe this is a one time chance. And so I immediately sent in like a random draft and realized that it was absolute garbage. <laughs> so I started um, TGing issues editors for help and they led me to the Got Issues uh, forum. And so, yeah, I just found it really fun to sort of hang out around there and give my help wherever I could. Um, Eventually, I made my way to the Got Issues Discord, and that's where I met people like Kretok State and Hani Dostania. And I mostly just sort of, I don't know, put together some random issues drafts. Um, I was really lucky because at this point, they started up the issues contest again, which had been yearly since. And I got lucky enough to um, end up being a, uh, a finalist, I think is the term, for that year's issues contest, which was not like spectacularly hard, but definitely not as much of an accomplishment next to people like Creed Talk State and Honey Duostania, who are like absolutely incredible at issues writing. But um, I personally love to write. And so this sort of narrative, like jokey form of presenting an issue really appealed to me. And I think honestly, a large part of the reason why I dedicate so much time to NS now is because of the foundations that got issues um, provided to me and just like the collaborative 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 nature of the community there yeah i i, I think uh, honeydew is absolutely uh fantastic um um i do personally find though that uh i can't really write that sense of humor that well uh maybe because i'm not a funny person or maybe because uh, <laughs> i'm just not very good uh I, i'm just not a very good writer uh uh it, you know no. <laughs> this is a humor the sense of humor is sometimes, uh, uh, you know, my my sense of humor is is kind of just like different to to hers. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, I I always find it a little bit um difficult um to 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 get that that sense of humor right. So I'm still in the sort of um several several drafts floating in issues, but <laughs> never never actually got one done uh stage um. Yeah. No, uh, no. Speaking yeah. of, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh no, yeah. I just wanted to say super quick that yeah, Honeydew is like 
honestly, I think unparalleled in their sense of humor, particularly. And that's why there's such like a, they, you know, they were an incredible uh, drafter. And um, also in the Security Council, they were an incredible writer too. But I think also a thing that trips up a lot of people is like, oh, they feel like they need humor for got issues. And I don't really think that's the case. Like I myself am not a super funny person. I'm awfully dry. And that's probably why I didn't get too many issues published. But I think that, um, you know, humor just isn't it doesn't come in like one taste and so for a lot of people they feel like um their issues don't end up going anywhere because they don't have that special kick or whatever it is but i think that you know people just need to go for it because it really is not just making jokes about an issue it goes from premise to writing to execution to narrative and all these different things that are different facets of writing that people can master and usually the editors step in and they help take care of the rest um i don't want to speak too much to it because i do like have a little bit more information on the process now as an editor but still i can say that you know it seems a lot harder than it is and people should take more shots at issues because it is the lifeblood of um the game and i would absolutely encourage anyone listening to just you know, submit a draft and don't be scared to take critique and don't be worried about, you know, not being funny enough or not being a good writer because it will come to you. Oh, yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, I, I totally agree with, with you there. Um, the, the issues process is quite, can be intimidating at times, I guess, but um, yeah, definitely, definitely worth a try. I, I know I've been trying, been trying the last two years. <laughs> um, um and yeah it's not i i think it's it's, it's definitely something to to be more to 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 encourage people to to join yes um just yeah, speaking sure. of humor because um um i know that none of your contributions to the sc are humorous whereas everybody <laughs> i've written for the sc is humorous or at least i think it was funny Although I'm I'm aware that there's a large number of people who disagree with me on this point, especially when I wrote uh, which what number was it? Uh, forty two. Yeah. Oh, is that um, the Christmas? I one? Yes. I think <laughs> I think that, that the, the the number of people who hated that um probably is in the stratosphere in terms of um <laughs> uh, the amount of hate mail was certainly a pretty high number. Put it this way. Um. Yeah. So um. Um, anyway, so tell us, tell, tell us about your your time in the SC. I think you I think you are the number one there, right? Um, I think you are. Yeah, in um, the in the SC, there's out of out of five hundred, um, out of five hundred eleven, I think you are the number one. You are the number one author. Yeah. Um. um yeah, I think so. <laughs> I, so tell us about um, the, I, I, I ignore my career in the SC because mine is just basically, um, mine just generates hate mail. Um. Oh. Quite frankly, uh, for it too in particular, because I, 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 that 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 was just um, you know controversial, I guess. Uh, but you've done forty three. You've done. Uh, you've been around the SC forty three times, um, and they are all actually proper and serious stuff. Um, whereas <laughs> mine is just a sing along. Mine is just a karaoke. Um, so you know, tell us about the the time the 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 forty three uh, times you've been on the SC and. Um, you know how you found it no yeah absolutely i i definitely can't tell you about all 43 times because we'd be here forever but um i well first you do need to give yourself a little bit of credit i don't think all the hate is necessarily on you i'm sure some of it was just the song because i'm i know a lot of people don't quite like that song although i'm kind of partial to it myself i love the holidays but um also yeah so i started in the sc um once again thanks to honeydew um honestly like huge shout out to them because like literally so much of my start on NS is just thanks to them. Um, they co-authored me on Condemn Noah's Second Country, which I basically didn't help on at all. Like I just kind of sat there and watched them do like incredible work and they just single draft past it. And it was the most brilliant thing ever to me. And when I first saw that, I was like, oh my God, I so, want no, to do this so, too. No, because... So cast, right? That was the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, all cuts, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That, 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 yeah. It was all cuts, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And so, um, from right. then sorry on, to interrupt you, on. no, no worries. Uh, yeah, so, um, 
I after that I attempted to author um commend Verdant Haven, which was honestly maybe a little bit premature and was very poorly written, honestly. But that was the only commendation actually I had written in my first snit of Venice before I took my break. And um I had a lot of um ideas, I guess, uh during this time. And really i just loved the idea that the security council was sort of ns's public storytelling like archive or just like collective gathering place to talk about the incredible players on ns because at this point i think i had started to get a little bit of an appreciation for how player driven ns honestly is because i don't think most people get to see um how much of ns isn't just you know a political simulator game with um funny ties to the real world and issues and stuff like that because when you really get into the you know the the uh what's the term i don't quite know the term it's like the gritty of it or something like that i feel like that's not quite it but um it starts to become less of a political simulator and more of a you know two decade long story about personalities and players and egos and legends and people who dedicate an ungodly amount of time in this game for better or for worse. And someone has really got to write a story about that because it is just incredible. Like no one can come up with this in a single mind alone. And so that was sort of the magic of the security council to me because, you know, it's just telling about the greatness that people have achieved where honestly no one else would see it because we don't write nearly enough about what other people have done. And the SE is a fantastic place for that. So when I was on break, um, I honestly didn't think about NS all that much. But whenever I did, it was through the lens of the Security Council. And so before I even came back, I started writing down a list of players I wanted to commend. Um, and eventually, I was bored in my first year of college. And I remember specifically what had happened was I um, DM'd, I think it was like, hold up. And it was like my first time in like a year having DM'd anyone on NS, I feel, I feel like. And I was like, hey, I want to commend you. And he was like, oh, you might want to like wait on that because he ended up running for delegate. And there was a whole bunch of, you know, complications there, as people remember. But that sort of got me started in like, oh, I'm going to write a bunch of SE drafts. And I was originally um, a little bit hesitant to because part of the reason I never wrote more than one Security Council resolution up to this point was I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I want to get things right. Um, and I more often than not don't get them right. But uh, I sort of over overcame that um, when I came back to NS and just started writing and just, you know, for the heck of it. And I started with, I remember, uh, Commend Witchcraft and Sorcery, which I had already started work on, I believe, like almost a year and a half before I actually put it publicly. And um, just how that went and how smooth and how supportive people were and how fun the whole process was, like leading my own um, security con council resolution after all this time just incentivized me to keep writing and keep writing and it just happened to be a relatively like easy um, set of terms in my first year for me so I literally just started you know going through my list of nominees that I had always wanted to uh, commend I remember on there was like Estillian and Kari and um, I eventually moved on to the Heroes of Valhalla server where there were tons of great ideas and I had started to meet a ton of awesome people through GP at this point and so I could recognize some of the names like I remember Lethin and Pictonia um, were two fantastic Europeans that I got to the, the chance to commend um, Kazuman to, uh, you know, brilliant player. And so um, I just kept writing and writing and it helped obviously that the current climate in the SC is a little bit... Um, favorable to you know defenders and um defender adjacent allies in independence so you know i got to commend a lot of players that i had already worked alongside um in my previous years and that was just really just fantastic um i don't think any of my commands you know are really like history shaping or particularly good to be honest they're a little bit on the lower side of the like you know quality just because that's kind of what happens when you push out that many commands and I don't know, I'm not all that great of a writer myself, but I'm happy that I got the chance to, you know, commend people who ought to have been commended so long ago. Um, it's just like happenstance at this point that I'm 
um, you know, the most prolific author in Security Council history, I'm sure someone will overtake me eventually, you know, like, when you look at people down that list, like, um, Quebecshire and Len Leavitt, and, you know, uh, Cretox and Honeydew and moreover, like, those are all like, absolutely fantastic writers. And I think that they were just ungodly, honestly, and the way they could shape resolutions. I remember specifically, one of my idols was Aramatha, like they just, every time they dropped the resolution, it would be game changing, like people were like, Oh, we need to shift the way we write resolutions because of this, like, I remember specifically condemned Golgoth was like, huge mm -hmm. inspiration for a couple of my resolutions. And so, you know, I, I had always aspired to that. But I think at this point in time, I can appreciate that when you look past the numbers of like, oh, whoever is the most prolific security council author, you can kind of see things like the actual quality and absolute like commendability or condemnability or, you know, recognizability of some players, because that's what we strive to embody and enshrine in the security council. Um, like, you know, Armantha, I think, is someone who ought to be talked about one day. And that's the kind of thing that I want to make sure people do get to see when they look back five, 10 years from now and, you know, go through the Security Council and see the names of players that they might never get to know, but will often hear about because that's just kind of how NS is. Oh, yeah, that, that's, that's fair enough. And I think you're being too modest on yourself, um, but given that um, the quality of your work is far higher than the quality of my work, or at least, you know, according to popular opinion, uh, I think you're being too hard on yourself and uh, <laughs> uh, entirely incomparable, uh, at least on the SC side. I mean, every time every time I turn on the SC, I, oh, I get his hate mail. Um, <laughs> um, and, <laughs> and, 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 you know, like my side on the, uh, on the, on the GA side, not a lot better, um, quite frankly. <laughs> Well, you're still pretty prolific on the GA side, and I think that's absolutely incredible. Um, and I don't mean like my point isn't to be modest or to be uh like you know hard on myself or anything. It's just more that um there is like a certain flavor and depth of contribution and unique like ability that a lot of NS players bring to the site, and that is just what I appreciate so much about this game because <laughs> it's just something different, how like you get these incredible people all in one place and NS provides such a neat outlet for creativity and innovation from them. That's just something I hope that people can appreciate a little bit more. Well, yeah, I I, I, I totally agree with you. Um, although I think um, one 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 point that, that I think was raised in the WA uh, uh, Discord side is that there is actually a shrinkage in the number of people who are in um, in either the GA side or the SC side um, because the, the, I mean I mean the community is shrinking itself um, post COVID but also that the number of people who are writing um, uh, has shrunk as well so we, we're getting like half a dozen overs on the GA side and. And quite frankly, you and Quebec and not not many other people in the, on the SC side. What do you think about that? That's actually a super interesting question. Um, whenever people talk about this, actually, I get flashbacks to the World Assembly Symposium in 2021, which was like one of my yeah. favorite NS events ever. Um, because at that point in time, the WA was, I think, just completely popping. There was an old guard of players from, you know, the 2010s who were active in the SC and GA up to this point. You know, Lord Dominator, Imperium, Anglorum, uh, Refuge Isle, like all those wonderful yeah. players. And um, well, at the same around. time, I mean, yeah, they're still around, but, you know, some of them don't write as much, you know, like LD definitely doesn't write as much, uh, Luca doesn't write as much, so on and so forth. And so um, yeah. I think there was a different level of engagement specifically at the time compared to now. And so, yeah, it, I just get reminded of that time because, um, you know, in 2021, at least for the SE, which I very much was familiar with, there was a lot of like, you know, reckoning with um, how resolution should be written like at this point we only had cncs and liberations and so like moreover for example was playing around with like some joke resolutions i believe or like maybe it was ld they did like condemn this game and then they repealed that and there was a ton of innovation going on with got ish or issues commands and cards commands and roleplay commands 
And yeah, I think it's really easy to look at those times and look at us now and be like, you know, even if there are still quite a few resolutions going through, it's a little bit more more one note, and that's completely fair. Um, it's a valid criticism, and I'm a little bit surprised actually to hear that the GA um, is a little bit less active because from an outside perspective, it looks like it is quite active still, but maybe that's just the you know prolificity of the few authors that are still there. But you're absolutely right from an SE perspective that it's a little bit um, a little bit like slower now. And I think this is something that would be super fun to talk about in like a future World Assembly Symposium because there are so many thoughts that could go into this and I think such an interesting debate that could be had about the reasons behind it. But from my perspective at a quick glance, it's just that firstly, relatively, it's super easy to look at a time like 2021, like I mentioned before, and be like, you know, this is a lot slower. And that's simply because in 2021, we were seeing an explosion in not just activity, but in the horizons um, in which we were looking at players who could be C and C, right? Because we were um, commending cards players who were relatively new at this point because cards were new, but that was a whole new horizon. And at the same time, we were commending issues players who were up until this point, you know, not really being commended or being looked at and the same for role play. And so that sort of opened up not only a bunch of people who could be commended and condemned, but also new styles for writing. Um, I know this was a little bit of the energy that was behind what ended up being coming decla declarations. And although the fuse had sort of died out by the time declarations were pushed out, especially because of how some of the early declarations were authored and the sort of lack of creativity maybe, or the lack of really interest in actually writing declarations, um, it's that sort of spirit that I think a lot of people love. And the inevitability of at least the Security Council is that it is a political system. And so it is, you know, um, subject to the behest of political figures. And it's no surprise to anyone at all on NSGP, at least right now, that we are in a pretty polarized time. And so that has done more to restrict the SE and its ability to, you know, recognize or condemn or, you know, otherwise uh, commend certain players. And at the same time, it's turned the nature of a lot of, um, you know, different proposal debates into sometimes bitter or sometimes apathetic responses. And so just to step ahead of a couple different criticisms that people have made about the SE in its current time, like people are quick to point fingers and that's totally fair. And also I'm ranting a little bit, so I'll try to wrap up super quick, but I want to note that part of the reason that the SE is a little bit quiet right now isn't because of any single figure's fault it's just a reflection of how we are in gameplay right now because at this moment we're you know regions are at war and people are at conflict with each other and um a natural byproduct of that is that you know an institution set on recognizing people is going to be a little bit quieter at the time and it's going to be more focused on things like liberations and injunctions that have mechanical effect on the conflicts that are currently happening um, that's just how it's going to be. And it's up to players who are interested and willing to drive growth in the SE to continue to do that. Um, I think that there are going to be a lot of people who say that the SE is dying because we won't condemn, you know, raiders or we won't commend certain people, but we have to recognize that the SE isn't, you know, active or bright when we're commending or condemning tons of people. That wasn't the spirit of the SE in 2021 or in 2019 or whenever it was active. The spirit of the SE was when we had arguments and when we had debates, and it was maybe not all in good faith, but it was activity and generally for the better. And then it was activity that actually wanted to recognize and, you know, point out the flaws in how the SE was developing and that wanted to see it go to new horizons. And so before we start talking about systemic issues behind the SE's, you know, political nature, I think we do need to start by first actually recognizing that we want to care and that we do actually care about the SE and where it's going because only then are we actually going to you know build energy in a community that is otherwise inactive um so that's my little spiel about the SE and its activity um and I don't know I think that is part of why I do want to see like a, another WA symposium that'd be super cool to see to be honest because those kinds of events are honestly really cool 
Yeah, I think the I I I spoke to IA about uh, another symposium. I think um, still working on that is what I understand the current <laughs> situation is. Yeah, um, uh, I think there's there's a there's more you know, more need for for his input, but I, I understand he's quite busy. That's the and anyway, that's the update that I have. Um, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, anyway, I think we should probably should wrap this up now um uh so um thank uh i'd like to thank my guest uh question today and uh thank you so much for joining us on on um tmp mbs um thanks west um thank you so much no absolutely anytime and thank you for having me i'm sorry for rambling towards the end there but i appreciate you having me on no, 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 no. So uh, the the pleasure is all mine. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, and uh, I'll see you again soon. See you.